Good evening, good evening, everyone. How was your day? I believe everything went well. I don't know which part of the world you're watching me from, but here in South Africa, most of us are on, um, the whole country is on, a, um, is on holiday today. Today is a public holiday. So we should be at home resting. If you are watching me from South Africa, and if you're watching from the rest of the world, I hope your day has been good so far. I believe all will be well in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining me once again. My name is Pastor Lou from Life Center Bible Church here in Midrand, Johannesburg, South Africa. This is our midweek. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. We thank God for his goodness and his faithfulness. We thank him for how he has been with us since last week till this time. We thank God for all that he has done for the supply of all our lives. Father, we just give you praise today. We bless your holy name for your goodness, for your faithfulness, for your loving kindness and your tendernesses that has kept us. We thank you because you never leave us and you never forsake us. As we have come into your presence today, Lord, I pray that all of you and none of me in the name of Jesus, help me to pass your word across, teach it to your people accurately as you would want them to hear it speak through me today oh god so that by the time we are done with this teaching our lives will not remain the same thank you father because you are god in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen 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 you know all this involves technology and sometimes it disappoints but all the same god is good and today we are going to learn what God wants us to learn in Jesus' name. Amen. So, today we are going to talk about a topic I have titled, The Blessing is in the Obedience. The Blessing is in the Obedience. Two weeks ago, we talked about um, planning with God. And not planning for God. Planning for the year 2021. And then last week, we talked about what are you saying? And we said that what you must be, what you should be saying, what, what you must be saying should be aligned with the word of God. Don't say anything that is contrary to the word of God. You remember you have what you say. If you say I am well, then you have what you say. And if you say otherwise as well, you have what you say. So your results will depend largely on what you say, but you should always make sure that your words are aligned with what God is saying about you, with his word concerning your life. And that for you to be able to control what you say, you need to learn to tame your tongue by allowing the Holy Spirit to walk in you so that you only talk when it is necessary. There's no harm in keeping quiet. That was what we talked about last week. That what are you saying? So apart from planning for the year 2021 with God and also changing the words of your mouth, making sure that your words align with the word of God. What I want to tell us about the year 2021 is very, very important. And the spirit of God is one because... Um, while I was preparing for this since last week, this is what the Holy Spirit laid on my mind. And our senior pastor also taught about it on Sunday at the, on, on the, for the two services last Sunday. So I know that the Spirit of God is one. That means God wants us to hear this. God wants us to hear this. The blessing is in the obedience. And I'll take my text from the book of Luke. I know that most of us have heard this story before. The book of Luke chapter 5, I'm going to read from verses 1 to 9. I'm going to read verses 1 to 9. Hallelujah. Um, Luke chapter 5, verse 1. So it was, 
as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. That is to just to row his boat a bit far from the, a, a little away from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Please notice that they are, here they are talking about Jesus Christ. That Jesus sat down in the boat and taught the multitudes from the boat. Now, verse 4, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Hallelujah. So this is Jesus talking to Simon Peter, that launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Verse 5, but Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Please, if your Bible, if, uh, if the Bible you're using is yours, underline the last um, clause in that um, verse saying that, or the last statement in that verse saying, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. He told him, Master, we have told all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. That is, they had told all night. It wasn't even during the day. They had told all night and their net was breaking. And because they obeyed what Jesus told them. He said, nevertheless, at your word, when Jesus told them, launch out into the deep and lay down your nets from, for a catch. So verse seven, so they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. So here, this is Simon Peter and his friends who were, as in like these guys from all indications, they are professional fishermen. That's what they do for a living. And they know, I'm sure as fishermen, they already know that the best time to catch fish is during the night. So they launched into the deep. They went out at night over the sea with their boats to catch fish. They trailed their nets into the sea, into the lake. But they came back. They toiled all night. Not for one hour, not for two hours. They toiled all night when they should be sleeping. They toiled the whole night and they caught nothing. They caught nothing. So they were so disappointed and they just decided to go and wash their net. They decided to go wash their net since they caught nothing. But Peter released his boat for Jesus to teach from. So Jesus taught from it. And when he was done, he told them, launch out into the deep. What has God told you this year that you didn't do? Jesus said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. I'm sure Simon Peter knows that Jesus was not a fisherman. So that was why he answered him in verse 5 and said, Master, we have told all night and caught nothing. But he quickly caught himself there and said, Nevertheless, despite this, at your word, because he had listened, Jesus taught the people, he taught the multitude from his boat. So he had listened to Jesus. He knows that this person is talking, is teaching from a position of authority. 
This person is teaching because he knows what he's talking, what he's talking about. So he has experienced Christ's teachings. He knows that his words carry power. So when Jesus said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch, Simon told him, we've toiled all night and we caught nothing. But all the same, no matter what had gone, what had, we had experienced the whole night, because you say so, I am going to launch again. So he, he obeyed the Lord Jesus by consenting to launch into the deep again, despite toiling the whole night. So some of us may be in our night toil right now where we are toiling and toiling and toiling by our own strength without God. So we need to now wait on the master and let him tell us what to do. So Simon said, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when he did this in verse 6, they caught a great number of fish. As in the fish was so much that their net was breaking. They had to call their partners, their friends in the other boat to come and join them. And after filling both boats, the, their boats were sinking. If we want, and in verse 9 says that even Simon Peter and all who were with him, all his friends and partners, were all astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. They were all astonished. If you, we want astonishing blessings, if we want net-breaking blessings, we need to be ready to do what the Lord tells us. The blessing is in the obedience. The blessing is in the obedience. Let's read Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Isaiah, the book of Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19. It says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. You, you see in the passage we just read in the book of Luke that Peter was trying to tell Jesus that, hey, Master, we've been out the whole night. We've thrown her net everywhere and we caught nothing. But nevertheless, at your word, he caught himself. Because most of us, that is what we do. When Jesus tells us that, okay, that place where they had rejected you, go back there. That contract or that place where you submitted a tender and they did not approve it or they, you were not selected, go back there, go and submit for another tender and say, no, these people, they don't want me there. No, the Lord is telling you to go back there. The Lord is telling you to go back there. The blessing is in the obedience. There's something about obeying God in this season, in this coming year. Obedience to God is very important. Isaiah 1 19 says, if thou, uh, if thou be willing and obedient, you must be willing to obey God. Nobody will force you to obey him. God will not force you to obey him. If thou be willing and obedient, thou shalt eat the good of the land. We all have heard the word of God over and over. We know that he is a powerful God. And yet when he leads us to do something, we don't obey him. Why? We've heard his word over and over. We've seen him perform miracles. We've experienced his wonders. We've experienced his wonders over and over. We know that he is a powerful God. And yet when he tells us, do things this way, do things this way, we refuse. Yet we want the blessing. We want the blessing, but we don't want to do the things that God requires of us. God will do his part. He's a faithful God. He will definitely do his part. 
But what are you doing? Are you obedient to his word? We all easily claim the blessings in um, Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 to 13. Ah, um, the, the Lord will command blessings upon thee. Oh, yes. But if we read the first verse of that chapter, Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, the first thing it says in verse 1, because we we are, and we, we bless shall you be in the city, bless shall you be in the country, we bless shall you be in the fruit of your body. It's easy for us to read these things. But verse 1 says that now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. So it's, it's to observe, that is to do carefully. To observe means to do carefully. All his commandments, not one, not two. Some of us, we obey him in certain areas of our life and then in other areas, we tell God, um, uh, please take a, take a, chill pill take a back seat here we don't need you in this area no you cannot be a lukewarm with god it's either you're cold or you're hot obedience is very important we all want the blessings most of us will skip verse one in determine 28 and we go and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. That's verse 2 as well. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body and the produce of your ground and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your needle bowl. We we'll read all the blessed, 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 blessed. But we don't want to do what is required. So observe means to do what he wants us to do carefully in the book of joshua chapter 1 verse 8 this book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth but thou shalt meditate during day and night this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it so it's about the doing. It's about the doing. There's something about being obedient to God, to God's word. Plainly in the Bible, it says, lie not to one another. You should not be a Christian that is known to be a pathological liar. That you cover one lie with another lie. And then it goes on and on and on like that. You just create a web of lies that you will not be able to get out of it. But if you tell the truth once, you break that chain of lies and everything is over. God is a merciful God, but then he will not override our will. Isaiah 119, as we've read, said that if thou be willing and obedient, that part of our will is important. We need to make up our mind that no matter what comes my way, I will obey God. My will is to obey my father. My will is to obey the word of God. Lie not to one another. Let him that steal, steal no more. Let him walk hard so that he may have to give to other people. The things that are not, that are works of the flesh should not be named among us. Strife, envy, where those things are, every evil work is common. No evil work will be found wanting. It should not be named among us Christians that we are walking in unforgiveness, that we are not walking in the love of God. It is very important for us to be obedient. Like I said, if you want astonishing blessings in the new year, in the year 2021, even for the rest of this year, because it's never too late for God. Yes, it's never too late for God. 2020 is not yet over. There's still 15 days more to go. God can turn your story around at any time. 
let's go and um, read um, Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verses 17 to 18. Psalm 103, verse 17 to 18. When we are obedient to God, we are not the only ones that enjoy it. Even our children's children will enjoy it. I'll read here. But the mercy of the Lord, Psalm 103, verses 17 to 18. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. Is righteousness to our children's children. Even when we are gone, God will still show our grandchildren and their own children and generations coming after us. Is righteousness, is faithfulness. Just because we fear him, just because we obey him, fearing him is what also means obeying him, reverencing him and everything that we do. Obedience to God is very important. Even if you read Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat of sinners, nor, um, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And so on. And in, in verse 3, it says that it shall be like the tree planted by the river side. That is, when you delight in the law of the Lord, when you don't sit in the seat of sinners, when you don't walk, that means your company, the people you keep company with is also important. Do you walk in the counsel of the ungodly? People who think that doing godly things are archaic, are old school. There's nothing old school about the Bible. There's nothing old school about instructions from God on how to live a Christian life. There's nothing, there's nothing old school about living a godly life. Don't let anybody deceive you. Whether new school or old school, God is the same yesterday, today and forever. The God that was there in the year of, um, in the years back of um, telephone that take or, or telegrams, it's still the same one that is here now in the days of um, smartphones and iPads and technology and all those things. So God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't let any man deceive you that some biblical, princ biblical principles are archaic or they are old school. There's nothing archaic about God. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's what Hebrews 13 it says. We need to learn to obey God. You need to make up your mind to follow only God's plan for your life in the year 2021. Psalm 37, verse 23 to 24. Verses 23 to 24 of the, uh, Psalm 37. Thirty-seven says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. This is New KJV. Let me read that same verse in the New Living Translation. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. The Lord holds the godly by the hand. Though they stumble, they will never fall. Psalm 91 says that he gives his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. They bear us up in their hands, lest we dash our feet against the stone. So if you walk in the way of God, if you are a godly person, the Lord delights in every detail of your life, no matter how small. The Lord delights in every single detail of your life. And when, even though you stumble, you will never fall. For the Lord holds you by the hand. The Lord himself holds you by the hand. He directs your steps. So all the things we've been teaching in the past two weeks, we said planning with God. 
Last week, we talked about what you are saying, align your word, aligning your words with the word of God. And now I'm telling you that it is also important for you to be obedient. So it's not about just saying the word of God. It's not about just uh, saying, declaring the blessings. Don't declare the blessings if you are not ready to do what it takes. If God says, do not lie, don't lie. If God says, do not steal, don't steal. If God says, do not envy, do not covet your neighbor's stuff, love your neighbor, love your neighbor. Do what God tells you to do and leave the rest for him to do his part. Obedience. I wish that the world will see that obeying God is very important. If we all obey God, our world will be a better place. Wickedness will be a thing of the past. Or even we'll be able to deal with wickedness together as Christians. But we, we have sort of like allow the ways of the world to creep into the church and then we now excuse some of her behavior under the guise of it's uh, it's what it's what is in vogue now no the word of god does not change the standards of god are still the same god's standards are still the same don't, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. The Lord knows them that are his. Let us retrace our steps. Where we have taken God's grace for granted, let us go back to him and ask for mercy. Let us ask for forgiveness, repent of our ways, and take the step of faith to obey him. Let us endeavor let us seek let us desire to live a life that is fully pleasing unto god as written in colossians chapter one that we, we should live a life that is worthy of him that when anyone sees you they can say oh yes indeed this is a child of god it's not like when some people see you they say eh is this one a christian are you sure that this person is a Christian? Ah, I don't think so. Some of us, we are only Christians on Sundays. During the week, we are something else. Lord, have mercy. The blessing is in the obedience. If you read Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3, if you read Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 13, Psalm 103, 107 to 18, even Deuteronomy 16 and verse 15, Joshua 1, 8, it's all about you obeying God, doing what God says. Doing what God says. If I go back to the text that we started with in the book of Luke chapter 5, Peter threw his net into the lake again because Jesus said so. He said, nevertheless, at thy word, nevertheless, at thy word, so you may have toiled and toiled and toiled. It's time to walk in. You're toiling maybe in your own strength. It's time to retrace your steps back to God. Retrace your steps back to the master. Go to him and ask him, how should you do this? And whatever he tells you, do it. Because the blessing is in the obedience. When you obey the word of God, when you obey every single word that God tells you, you will be blessed beyond measure. The Lord himself will hold you by the hand and direct your steps. I pray God will help us all in Jesus' name, that this word will, be, will, will germinate and bring forth good fruit in our lives. So that next year, come 2021, even from now on, the, the rest of this year till 2021 we will experience net breaking blessings astonishing blessings blessings that people will see and they will say ha ah, this can only be god for us to experience such blessings we need to 
obey God. Obedience is key. 2021, I'm telling you, there will be a difference in the lives of those who obey God and those who don't. There will be a big difference in the lives of those who obey God and those who don't. Because this period, this season, God is set to do his wonders, astonishing wonders in our lives. But we need to do our part. That is it. We need to do our part. And our part is to obey his word, to fear him, to walk in his ways. It is in obedience that God will have no choice than to show up with his supernatural power. When you are obedient to him, you can go before him and say, God, you told me not to do this and I didn't do it. You told me to do this and I did it. Come, you need to show up for me. You need to show up for me. And he will surely show up. He will, God will surely show up. I assure you that. He said, while we are yet speaking, he, he, he answers. He's a God who hears our prayers. And he doesn't just hear, he answers them as well. So let us do our part and leave the rest for God. I know that 2021 will be a glorious year. Like I said, don't seek the blessing and not be ready to do what God wants you to do. Do your own part. Do what God has required of you, which is that you obey his word. We will have a glorious 2021 in Jesus' name. A glorious, beautiful, wonderful year that men will see and they will want to come and taste that our God is good. Yes, the psalmist said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Indeed, our God is good. So the things that God will do in our life, if it lies next year, even from now on, as long as we are obedient to him, will draw more people into his kingdom. May God bless us all in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining me today. I trust that you have been blessed with this. Go home again. Meditate on these words. Meditate on these scriptures. And make up your mind to be obedient to God. Remember, the blessing is in the obedience. Till you hear me again next week or you watch me. Have a wonderful week. Stay blessed, stay safe, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year in advance. Bye.